Well, good morning, as it may be. Somebody calling it brunch. What is brunch? You folks know what brunch is? Too late for breakfast and you're too early for lunch. On a ranch, they told me one time if you had brunch, it's just because you're too lazy to get up that morning and you wasn't going to get no lunch. So I really don't know, but we are so glad to have each and every one of you join us here in the kitchen. We are fortunate to be here, and we're so glad to have y'all watching. And today, mm, oh my goodness, we're going back and cooking one of Shan's recipes. She, oh, sorry, Pogo Koala, it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Pogo Koala. That I is that's a, what it was. That is good name. I like that. Hope you have a great day. I do. It is a great day to have a birthday. She came up with this recipe because she said here in southwest Oklahoma, we like to put coconut on everything. Mm -hmm. Now, I do love a coconut pie. I love coconut bars. I love to eat coconut. But Shan said we're going to make a French toast, coconut French toast. And folks, when she first started, I'm thinking a northern girl trying to make a southern tradition food. I don't know if it's going to work but she knocked it out of the park. And this is so easy for you to do. And a lot of you might be wondering who won the prizes that was given away on the quesadilla video that we just put out last week, I think it was, or the week before. But hey, we have picked the winners and I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, you'll hear your name live and on TV here with Memorex. Let me get this out and okay, grab- Okay, but let's preface it. We started off, it was just supposed to be one winner. Yeah. We were going to have just one winner, but folks, there were over four, nearly 4,000 comments on the quesadilla video. And when you go through there and you read them all, y'all touched my heart so much because there's so many people that told me why they'd like to win this, but there were so many of them said they'd like to win it for someone else. We even had some people that said they would withdraw their nomination to try to win because they wanted someone else to have a chance. It's a great place we live in, and we thank y'all so much for this. And there won't be one winner. There will be one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> five winners. It's the Easter tulips. They needed a drink this morning. They did. So Preston Mitchell, if you're watching, my friend, I hope you are. He wanted to sell us that if he wins this cookbook, he's going to give it to his son in the Air Force. Well, Preston you did win this little prize with the cookbook and the relish. And the next is a guy that sort of touched my heart because he works one of them all night graveyard shifts he does. And I hope I say his last name, Daniel Grigio. He stocks at Walmart and they bring a grill out there and they grill, sort of help everybody out. So we thank you so much, Daniel, for what you do, keeping us stocked up. And then there is this guy I know, his name is Tommy Welch and his son is in the Air Force and we thank him so much for his service. And he said he'd like to win this book and these prizes to send to him to give him a little glimpse of home. Also, Parker. Parker just got out of the army and now he is the family cook at home. So we wishing you well, hope this helps you out, Parker. And another one is Angela, a healthcare worker who has put in a lot of countless hours and a lot of shifts to help everybody out in this time. And folks, Every one of you is a winner. I wish we could just give you all something so I'm gonna give you a big hug from a social distance, know what I mean? That's what we call it. We love y'all very much. We do consider you family. This is not just a YouTube channel. This is a time to where we come together every Wednesday and we give you these bonuses on Saturday to let you know that y'all are part of our family and we share some food, a little bit of history, some tail wagon from the taste testers, and some happy dancing. So. Let's talk about what we're gonna need to get this little thing to go in here in the kitchen this morning. First of all, you're gonna need one of these. Yes. I mean, you gotta have a cast iron skillet. Everything tastes better than that. Now you're gonna need two shallow dishes, I would say, one for the wet, one for the dry. You need some all-purpose flour, some sugar, some cinnamon, and guess what? And we listed that all below. And some coconut. Mm-hmm, shredded sweet. I like that better than anything else. And I know we made this with Texas toast when we made it for the cookbook, but folks, that stuff's getting hard to find even in Oklahoma. So we're just using regular old Mrs. Baird's white bread. But Shan told me there was some people that were actually making a sourdough loaf of bread to use for this. Send me a piece of that, please. I would like to have some. You'll need some butter. You'll need some milk, a little cinnamon. Hey, this is really easy to put together. 
The recipe that I'm using is the same that you have, but I'm just gonna make a half a recipe because the Beagle and Duke can't eat that much this morning. So, How many I, does it make for regular? Uh, six servings, which okay, is 12 two. pieces of bread. Okay, so two pieces. Of two bread. pieces, but for me and you- That's a lot of math. That's three and three is what we're gonna to use today. Okay. So I think we should just get right into it and see what's happening. So let's go ahead and mix the wet ingredients first. And we're gonna cut this in half, remember on my end, but if y'all are cooking along at home and you got lots of people waiting on you, use the full recipe. A third of a cup of milk is half of it. And it calls for five cackleberries. How do you split an egg in half? So we're just gonna use two, we are. Just crack them right in there. I hope y'all uh, got to see the other egg video, the deviled eggs three ways. Everybody should grace some of them at the table tomorrow, being it's Easter, and have some deviled eggs there. I and cinnamon goes in there too, doesn't it? Uh huh. But we're gonna have to have one of these. No, things. use the good little. The good little, little bitty whisk. I like those better. Yeah, but I want y'all to know, folks. Are this is this a manly color? Does it <laughs> does it match my makeup? So to make Shan happy, we're going to do this right here. We're going to shake some cinnamon. Now, I have known folks to how put... How much cinnamon for people who are... How much cinnamon? Yeah. We'll have to look at the recipe because I'm always just a throw it in there kind of guy. I think it's going to say... I don't know. One teaspoon is Try what it so says. That whisk accents your shirt. Accents my shirt. Now, folks, also in with the eggs and the cinnamon and the milk... We're going to use some sugar. So, in the sugar it goes. It calls for a half a cup. Remember, I'm halving it because I'm using a fourth. And your manly whisk. And my manly little whisk Look here. Look at that. I mean, we're already talking about some great things. We, you Chris can, in Kentucky says, how much cinnamon? The right amount. The right amount is right, Chris. Teaspoons, tablespoons, all that stuff. Hey. Sometimes you just throw it in there till it looks right and you know it's good to go. Now, we're going to let that rest for just one second while I get rid of them berries. I'm going to find some heat, I hope. And we're going to put it on about medium, which is about 5.5. So we have our wet going. Now it is time to put the dry together. And you're going to have to bear with me, folks, because I'm going to have to look. Okay, flour, coconut, and sugar is what goes in the dry. Did we done mess up, Shannon? Was this not supposed to have sugar in the wet? Uh, check the recipe. Whoa, whoa, uh -oh. whoa, we might have had a malfunction here. Nope, so we won't have to add the sugar in the dry, folks. I'm sorry, it goes here, but it's in the wet this morning, so hey, Everybody make a mistake. I tend to make about three a day. Shout out to Ely, Nevada. Ely, Nevada. We have been through there, haven't we, Shan? So we're going to start with a, some flour. And then, like I say, it is all purpose. About a half a cup of coconut. But full recipe is a cup. Full recipe is a cup. It is. Where's the bee going to do? They're asleep in the living room. If you want to show people, I mean, they work hard, they do. There's Duke. I don't know where Big is. Big, you're missing out, buddy. Here he is, right here. He's, hey, folks, I didn't know we was live. <laughs> what have you been doing in there, napping? So, we got our skillet on. It has been heating for a little while. We're going to use about a tablespoon of butter for each frying of the toast. So, that is precisely a tablespoon. Just let her get in here, make sure you get it to all sides of this. What, what skillet are you using? I am using a field skillet today. It was, it was handy, so it was the first one I grabbed. We got Pawhuska. Pawhuska, Oklahoma. I have been through there many times hauling a load of cattle. So, as we get this butter, you just want to make sure that it gets good and melted. Don't brown it. Guess what, folks? It's time to do some dipping. Mm-hmm. How many of you out there 
ever have this for breakfast. We very seldom do till Shan come up with this recipe. Now we try to have it as often as we can. So, let me get these here tongs and a drink of coffee. <laughs> you get a drink before you begin, huh? Uh-huh. So, where's it go first, Shan? Right in this here. And you want to pat this on there and dip it in. I mean, make sure it, it soaks in all that cinnamon and that egg and that milk together. And then you have to be careful when you pick them up here because sometimes bread will tend to fall apart. That little stuff, yeah. It is not as thick as that other. Make sure you get a good coating on there that it sticks really okay. well and pat her down there good. It'll sort of help bind everything together. Turn her over. Make sure the bottom side is coated well. And guess what? It is time to fry. But we're going to need a utensil. We ain't got because this transfer could be tricky and try to fall apart. Uh oh. Okay. Wait, let me get in. Okay. That's pretty. Give it a shake, shake. They're shaking all over the floor. Can you kill that light? Uh huh. How's there. that? That's better. Thank you. Well, that one is sitting there minding its own business, folks. Let's just go ahead and get another one in there. Now, if you're using Texas toast or something that's a little thicker, they hold up a little better to this and you won't have as much trouble. So just uh, remember what kind of bread you're using. If you let it get in them eggs and that milk solution too long, thinner bread will try to fall apart. And I think we're going to have room for one more. We got anybody giving us any help? Shan, I need a little help in the kitchen this morning. And anybody giving me some help there? How many people actually cook in this? Or are you going to watch and just cook it later on? Either one is fine with me. Montana got three inches of snow. Yeah. It, getting close to Easter and you always got to have that Easter spell. So we were supposed to be like 78 today with some severe thunderstorms. Snow by Tuesday. Pardon me while I wash Chris my fingers. Along. Chrissy? Logan? So you can see that butter that we added back in there this mm. second time. Let's get that in back over here to so we can get it this to join in. And that is what we call nearly a done deal. And we need to be looking at the bottom of them first ones we put in because you just want to sort of get them a golden brown. So let's just take a Wait, peek under me, there. No, not yet. No, not not yet. yet. Let me see a little peek. All right. Anything happening? A little bit. Just a little. It doesn't take long, but remember, I know some of you might be in a hurry and you think, well, we can crank the fire up a little. That coconut will actually burn on there if you get it too hot too quick. So just let it sort of mind its own business there. Just brown it up good on one side, flip it over, and then guess what? Flip it on a plate, put you some syrup on it and call it good, cause that dog will hunt. And I think while we're just standing here, standing around waiting on them to cook, I think we should visit a little. You want to? How about you, Shen? You know, we're really blessed to have all the things going on that we have. Let me back up, this is live. <laughs> we rewind. <coughs> rewind. This is a, a time that we <clears throat> need to all come together, folks. And just, even though we, <clears throat> this is really hard for me to get out. Should have some whiskey in the coffee. Uh, no, not this early in the morning, Shen. This is a time where we may be all a little out of separation here from family and friends, and we can't gather and we can't hunt Easter eggs tomorrow, but you can. Lock them kids in the bedroom, put them Easter eggs in the living room. Just make sure that they're all hard boiled because when you sit on them couch cushions, it ain't good if they're not. So I think we should probably look at this one because I think it's Ooh, just about right. Look at him. Look at that toasted coconut and you can smell that coconut as it toasts because mm, it just brings out so much more flavor. Now I have double dipped these before, but it don't try to hold up as well. You'll end up tearing that bread up if you do. So. 
just take it slow and easy mm, and it'll be good. Any questions we got coming out, Shannon? Um, someone asked about the recipe, which we will link below. The, okay, the recipe will be down there listed in the link below to where you can get this, or it's also on the community tab that we posted earlier about this. But remember, I'm just doing a half a recipe. The recipe in the book is different, and the recipe that what we post is different. It's a full blowed recipe with 12 pieces. Do you have a coconut dance that you're working on? A coconut dance? You want to see part of it? Well, well, oh. You know what that's called? I have no idea. Dodging them coconuts as they fall off the tree. That's what it is for me anyway. Let's check this oven. Whoo, things is looking right. So, I need to know. Any update on the book tour? Update on the book tour. Right now, everything is still either canceled or on hold. Uh, we're just waiting for folks to say they think everything's clear. But folks, we're going to comply with all the rest of the people across the United States and everywhere, and we're going to stay at home, uh, do our little social distancing, and uh, try to get this beat as quick as we can. And uh, that's uh, the best way to get by with this. And a lot of folks I see wearing masks, and people told me I could even wear a bandana now, but when I tried to go in the bank, they wouldn't let me in, so I don't know about that. But I think these first ones might be ready. Let's take a look. Woo. And you can just put them anywhere you want. We're gonna let them brown just a tad more. I like that one. I don't know that I can eat all three of these at one time, but I'm sure gonna try. Someone wants to know if the whiskey goes over sauce would work on this. Ooh, bread the bread pudding with the whiskey cream sauce it would be so good. Just dump that right over there and it's so easy to make. It's just cream and sugar and butter and a little bit of your favorite bourbon or whiskey. Mm, such a great flavor that it gives. But we're using a little Griffin's today, made in Oklahoma product it is. So if we can get it open, things have childproof labels on them. A lot of people I know, they use honey or they would even top this off with powdered sugar. But when you got the coconut on there, which is sweetened, and we had the sugar in there, you don't need no powdered sugar. All you be needing is a fork. Do you have one? No. <laughs> but I'm gonna. Mm. Now, that's three layers of goodness there. Let me get a beauty close shot. Yes. I be liking it. And look who showed up right at the right time. Hang on. Me make sure it's cool enough. Sit down there, sit down and wait for this because this is special, okay? I want you to know that people are counting on you to have manners. Do not even think about doing it. Don't do it. Okay, okay you can do it. Good boy. How was Ooh. it? Oh, a lot of tail wags, was there? Well, folks, I think I'm going to try me a little bite. Do you like sorghum? Yes, I do love some sorghum and it would go good with this. When we were little and mama would make this on occasion, sometimes we'd have sorghum, sometimes we'd have honey, sometimes we would have Cairo syrup because that's all that's in the house. Bone appetite. Does Duke get any? Mm. Mm. Oh, here we go. Watch your coconuts, B. You got to be quick. Woo! That is good. Duker, are you going to participate this morning? We filmed all day yesterday, folks, and the Duker thought his world had come to an end. He was so tired. You wait. Get over here. You, over here. This is dog training 204. Over here. Over here. Okay. Hang on, baby. There you go. Well, folks, Easy, simple as it could be. Ask if anybody, let's see, has anybody pulled Any, yours out yet? Is everybody through? Got it on the plate? Hey, I'm all about eating. Uh, we hope you enjoyed these little live cook-alongs because we're thinking about doing some more of them. And hey, we'd like to try to do some outside if we can, weather permitting here in a day or two. Maybe we can get back to this. Bill Tucker says his is on the plate. That was his bad. is on the plate. boy, Bill. Are you putting syrup on it? Honey? Molasses? Hey, whatever you put on there will be good. 
Top this off on the side there with about three pounds of bacon. You're in pretty good Maybe business. Maybe do one more as people are... People are getting back on. Yeah, we've got a few just, just popped on. And what me, are you making again, Ken? I am making Shan's recipe in the cookbook, Coconut French Toast. Matt says his kitchen is on fire. <laughs> Matt uh, is? But he had time to type, so <laughs> All I can tell you, Matt, is don't burn it. <laughs> Going in the milk and egg and cinnamon solution to the flour and coconut and a little bit more flour because we're about out of that on that side. Oh, Scott says her boyfriend is eating while she has to make hers. <laughs> oh, that's what you call manners right there. So make sure both sides are coated well. Get this last one in the skillet. Got us some butter in there melted. And I hear that Do you sizzle. add butter every time? Every time you cook, I like to add a little more butter because you can't go wrong with butter. And folks, y'all turned me on to it, and Shan did too. I have started using some of that Kerrygold Irish butter. It is some of that good. It is Somebody for sure. Somebody said they did theirs wrong. It came out as a smoked brisket. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's close. That is close, it is. And folks, like I say, this is easy. You can get you an assembly line in there in the kitchen this morning. One dipping, one flying, one frying, and two eating, and uh, you'll be in good shape. But hey, it's easy. We glad you come along to watch the big and do. They love French toast, but the big has here working, but Duke has went back to bed in there. Do you have a teaser for what's happening this coming week? Oh, what's folks say is a recipe coming out Wednesday. Ooh, one of the greatest things I've ever made in a long, long time. And you might have overlooked it thinking, I'm not going to buy that. But folks, it is good. Would you like to tell me what it is? Tune in next week. I'll oh, you're not going to say it? Uh-uh. It is. Mm. Maybe give some hints. Well, it is meat. Okay. And it is smoked. Ooh. And it has a great caramelized sauce that goes on top that will make you break down and do a happy dance every time you take a bite. 2.30 Wednesday Central Time. You don't want to miss this one or any of them. But this one, folks. It is special, and it will have you craving it as soon as you watch. Don't take long to brown them up. It does that butter and that stuff. Milk and that egg sort of sit right there on top to give it that good coating. But French toast is supposed to be good and soft. And look at there. It is so good. Mm. Thank you, baby. You're good help. Anybody else just joining us here at the last of it? We are so glad to have... Each and every one of you. When Tim wants to know what ingredients for Wednesday, but that's What's not a live cook long. That's, that's not a live, it's just a regular video Wednesday, 2.30 Central. We'll be doing a smoked something out there on the Hasty Bake Grill. You don't want to miss it, folks. It is good, and I guarantee you, mm, it will fill you up. That's what I like about it so much. So as always, we thank you for stopping by. I tip my hat to all the veterans service men and women who have kept that old flag flying above our camp wherever we may be. But also folks, I'd like to thank the first responders, the EMTs, the doctors, the nurses, the people that clean the hospitals, the one doing the testing. We just want to thank y'all so much and lift all those up in prayer and just tell you how proud we are. And we as a nation and we as a great country will get through this. We always have and we will. And guess what tomorrow is? It's Easter, hopping down the bunny trail, he is that old cottontail. So, folks, remember, it is a great day. And there's a lot of things that are closed, a lot of things you can't do. But, folks, there's two things that are open. One of them is a great, great opening. That is the tomb that Jesus was in. It is open. He is risen. The other is your heart. It should be open. It should be full of kindness, joy, and love. We wish you a very, very happy Easter, and we hope you have a blessed one. Remember... Hey, we are strong. We will survive and be sure and happy dance. God bless you each and every one. Why don't you happy dance us out? Well, we're going to do the happy Easter bunny dance. How you like that?